What's good with YouTube? Y'all already know. Big Flocka with a convict's perspective. And I'm going to smash, dash, slide on through with that little bit of energy. Please hit the like, subscribe, comment, do all those things to help support this channel. And hit that bell notification for future fire content. Once again, as you can tell by the title and thumbnail, I'm going to have more pictures of Mexican Mafia members and their associates. And I got some good ones where they were on the yard in places like San Quentin and Folsom and whatnot, right? Just some good ones. Now, once again, though, let me address that this channel is not to glorify or um, give life to that lifestyle, but to show people what that life's about through its past members, through past stories, and through current stories, as well as my personal stories. There's nothing glamorous with this lifestyle. And you get to a certain point to where there's no longer time to make excuses, man, because you know what? We all have a choice, a choice to make the decisions of who we want to be and the direction of life in which we want to go. And hopefully, man... Those that tune into this channel, hopefully you can make better choices for yourself as well as shed light to those of your loved ones, friends, family, what would not, right? About how this life really is. Anyhow, I got some good pictures on this one, man. And even though I've done this is my third episode on Macy Mafia pictures, there's still a lot more I could do, man. And I'll probably do so in the future, man. But for now, enjoy this one. Here we go. Here we go, man. This is almost looks like this is in San Quentin, but I'm not sure, right? But we're going to start with the top. The top is from the left. Raul Garcia, a.k.a. Weddle Smooth from Pacas. Next to him is Alex Aguirre, a.k.a. Pee Wee from the Avenues. Next to him is Carlos Diaz, a.k.a. Robot from Logan Heights. Next to him is Unknown. Next person is Alfredo Sandoval, a.k.a. Chato from Arizona Maravilla. Next to him is Jesse Gonzalez, a.k.a. Bird from La Puente. The second row, the first three people, unknown. But the third, Daryl Baca, a.k.a. Night Owl from Artesia. Unknown, unknown. Now the third row, Richard Banuelas from Brole, unknown. Fernie from Dogpatch, and unknown, unknown. That's a group of individuals who've all been influential in the Mexican Mafia. It's kind of crazy to see them all together on one yard. Now in this picture, man, you got on the bottom first, right? Alfred Salinas, a.k.a. Tigre from the Avenues. Next to him is Unknown and Unknown. Now the top row right here is kind of interesting. You got Senan Grajeda from La Rana, Daryl Baca from Artesia, and Fernie from Dogpatch, all in the top row. All these individuals, man, were very powerful within the Mexican Mafia at one time. Some still are. Still, some have influence. While some are, are not as influential as they used to be. There goes a solo picture of Fernie Mac kicking back posted on the joint yard, right? Like I said, some of these pictures are kind of interesting because you get to see them, you know, before they were up in the shoe and before they really had a name for themselves, man. And Fernie's one, man, that has a long, long reputation, man, for being a very influential fucking member. Very powerful member, man. And he somehow used to always be the one that was always in some type of form or fashion in the mix. Politically, even though the Mexican Mafia doesn't really promote that they're about politics, you know. Fernie was a real one, though. Now, this picture right here is interesting, man. This is Gilroy. Way back. Right there, I think that's in Folsom, man. Just posted up on the yard. It looks like he's a little bit older at that time, right? As we know, he eventually found... The Lord, his Lord and Savior, and was a, an advocate Christian up until his death, man. Rest in peace to Kilroy. Like I said, he was probably one of the top three, top five most powerful MA members during his time era. And the way he went out, hey, he didn't drop out. He didn't do none of that stuff. He just found a better calling for himself. There goes another picture of Gilroy back in the days, man. Not your best picture, man, but um, it's definitely him for sure. There goes a picture of Raymond Champ Mendez. And so I didn't really know too much about Champ. At first, I think I got, you know, Champ Reynoso and Champ Mendez is the same person. And I was like, man, this looks like there's years apart, right? But apparently, man, there was a time period when he was living a double life, actually, out there in the streets, man. And was really one of those ones that was trying to have a low profile as far as his name. He ends up getting indicted. And this next picture, man, this is an older version of someone we've seen in the pictures earlier. That's Pee Wee from the Avenues. I think the Avenues, man, probably had more made members than almost any other gang, I believe. 
Last I had heard about Tigre, he was on disregard up in the Bay. And he actually gave some of his resources, right, to actually the NF at one time for them to start working out there on the streets as far as some of the cartels and drug traffickers that he knew. There goes a picture of Reggie Haro, a.k.a. The Bull or Toro, from Santa Ana. You know, his story, man, he caught, he caught his case when he was really at a young age for his big homies when he ended up shooting a cop, man. Now he's doing a lot of more um, outreach work, right, while he's behind the walls, man, and he's left that gang lashed out you know, behind. Now, I'm not sure if he was actually a maid member or if he was an associate, right? But I know his case was very controversial, man. And for a long time, man, was looked at, you know, as someone who was really with the business back in the days. There goes a picture of Conejo, Art Blajos, right? The one who does a lot of work as far as today he's an evangelist, you know, trying to find people's way as far as, you know, his Christianity. He tells a story, man. His story is a good one, right? He talks about how he was supposed to, you know, do a hit on his neighbor, right? But through Jesus Christ, man, he ended up giving this guy another chance to live, and it just consumed him. You know, the Lord did. And it changed him from that day forward. He was a beast in his days, man. I heard that from a lot of old-timers. Now, there goes a picture of Luis Flores Weddle Buff, a better picture, man. A little bit older, right? But he's one of the founders of the Mexican Mafia. Now, once again, there goes the younger picture of Big D. As you guys already know, man, one of the best boxers in the system during his time era, man. They said he couldn't he couldn't be beat in the boxing ring. There goes a picture of Alex Hondo Lechuga, another founder and member. No, actually, he was a founder of the Mexican Mafia along with Weddle Buff, and he's also from Hawaiian Gardens. And there you go right there is, man, Timothy Joseph McGee. From Tunerville, Lifa Trece. He's also been made a made member of the Mexican Mafia, man, who was basically a fucking killer out there in the streets, man. Now, the MA has produced a lot of killers in their time, right? Almost every one of them. But I think this is the first one that basically, you almost look at him as like he's a serial killer. That's how prolific of a killer he was, man, and how much he really enjoyed doing what he did does. He's been on death row, but he has since been taken off death row. He was in Slim's Valley. But he ended up going to the hole in Solidad based upon an incident that had happened on the yard with the Crips. So I still have a whole bunch more pictures, man, for you guys, man. But I'm going to do those in the coming weeks. Hope you guys enjoy this. I'm going to re-put some of these pictures up again as I'm closing this. With that said, it's your boy Flacco from A Convict's Perspective. I'm out.